Hello guys, welcome to the cabin of a Mercedes-Benz W140 S500 from 1997. It's very 90s in here, in fact it's actually quite 80s in here and that shouldn't come as a surprise because this car, this car's development started in uh, 1981. Anyway, uh, it only reached the market in 1991 and this specific car is a 97 model. So you, you kind of have... Um, a lot of 1980s Mercedes-Benz design themes here meshed with like you know the tech that it obviously had to carry but still you, you have these lovely chunky big buttons and everything just feels like it will last you know forever look at this massive big thin rim steering wheel no no flap paddle gear shifts and, and those kind of things still dual zone climate control we've got a radio cassette deck here this button will need a little bit of maybe a replacement um, when people still smoked in cars and then uh, i did discover a cd changer in the boot which is quite cool nice touch on this car uh, which is really fully loaded double glazed windows which is why when i roll my window up it is not only very quiet in here but you probably can't see me really very well. So this is going to be an interesting one. Um, I'm behind the wheel of a 1997 Mercedes-Benz S500, the W140 generation S-Class, also called the Cathedral on Wheels. And I must say, Within the first 20 meters, I'm intimidated. It is literally like driving a massive building on wheels. And, uh, you know, because it's, it's loaded with so many high-tech features of that time, many of which probably was fitted to, the, to a car for the first time, ergonomically it's not really necessarily laid out in the way that you would think it should be so excuse me if i fumble my way through this review because um, my word there is a lot to take in here but anyway the s500 or the w140 some uh, quick history now remember the w126 s class was probably one of the highest regarded Mercedes-Benz cars ever made. I mean, even today, people still want a W126. And when Mercedes had that car on the market, it didn't really have that much competition. And so when they developed, started developing this car as far back as 1981, it was within that context of you know they kind of have the luxury market to themselves but then suddenly the world changed and um, BMW became a more serious competitor and so halfway through the development process or I think even later than that Mercedes-Benz realized that oh my word BMW is developing a V12 for the new 7 series we don't have a V12 so they had to basically re-engineer the entire front end of the car to fit a v12 engine and so if you look at the original design drawings of the w140 it was quite an elegant looking thing but what came out in 1991 i think was not really that elegant uh, in fact it it was not very well received in terms of its styling anyway and the reason was that the entire design process, the entire engineering process was a compromise after compromise after compromise after scrambling to react to something. And so firstly there was the V12 issue which they addressed. And then um, a new challenger came from completely unexpected quarters. Lexus arrived with the LS, first generation LS400. And that car was just so good and that's you know such high tech that Mercedes-Benz felt that um, 
the car that they had in development at the time wasn't really going to be good enough to you know to have um, have the Lexus beaten and so they went back to the drawing board again and loaded more tech and more performance and more testing and all of those things and and, and you know the costs of developing this car just went up and up and up and then almost comically at one point um, two of the main engineers I believe on the car I think they they were actually more on the powertrain or the or, or, or the suspension uh, more mechanical side of it visited the styling studio where the W140 was being um, designed and sort of overseen by Bruno Sacco the legendary Mercedes-Benz designer and they were two fairly big chaps and when they got into the back of the styling back of the one W140 their heads bumped against the roof and so that caused a bit of a hoo-ha at uh, Mercedes-Benz again and so again Bruno Sacco and his team had to go back to the drawing board and so you ended up with a car that looked well as it does it looked kind of over oversized in certain respects um, and that was because the entire design was a compromise in the end to make up for all these perceived uh, sometimes deficiencies or you know to, to counter what the rivals were going to bring to the party because Mercedes-Benz had to be the best that was the company's belief and come hell or high water they were going to be the best and so the W140 process or development process nearly bankrupted Mercedes-Benz. It was a $1 billion development process. And uh, there are not many companies that can, you know, absorb that. But Mercedes-Benz did and they launched the S-Class and people were not really... They're not really enamored with this big tank. Eh? Also at the time you know environmental concerns and things were rising so yeah it it didn't arrive at a very good time it didn't arrive in sort of the best shape I guess um, all things considered and um, I don't think it was ever considered a, a dismal failure for Mercedes-Benz but it certainly it certainly showed that Mercedes-Benz was fallible Nevertheless, you know, nothing that comes out of a $1 billion engineering process is going to be under-engineered. So what you have here is a car that is probably one of the last over-engineered Mercedes-Benzes. And um, for that reason, I'm quite excited to drive this because I've, you know, I've always had mixed feelings about this Generation S-Class. And um, these days they are so cheap, but you hear these horror stories that, you know, you shouldn't go near one. And yet, you know, as time goes by, I have to admit, I'm starting to like it, even design-wise to some extent. It's sort of like, yeah bulky it's not pretty but it's it has presence let me put it that way this is a 1997 model so it's one of the la later cars and um, yeah it's a s500 so it's powered by a 5 liter v8 with if I'm not mistaken it has around 247 kilowatts and about 470 newton meters of torque so yeah it's um it's it's not insignificant amounts of power and torque but compared with what you get from a s500 these days obviously those are those are small figures but this is also a car from uh, from an era where you know amg sporting kits or amg packs and things were not really available and and the focus was really much very much on on a, on a um, technological tour de force, super luxurious, super comfortable status symbol. And so the W140 was still snapped up by 
princesses and dictators and yeah presidents and um, yeah I've now done what five kilometers in the car it does make you feel something it does it does make you feel like you're in something not normal let me put it that way still got the three-pointed star on the bonnet which is what I want want when I actually buy S class and it sort of wafts eh? um, in a way that modern Mercedes Benzes don't really do anymore and I don't know if you've noticed from this video um, well firstly because I've done so many shoots in the in the last 24 hours my battery powered mic has gone flat so I'm back on a on a normal old-fashioned mic and I don't know what the sound quality is like to be honest but this car is quiet inside I can only hear the fan blowing so this car this specific model that I'm driving has quite a interesting backstory as well and one that makes it potentially even more attractive um, this car was bought back in 1997 by a Mercedes-Benz dealer principal in the Eastern Cape and he used it, 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 it was his pride and joy, and he used it to go to church and back, basically, on Sundays. And so this, even though it's now 2022, and this is a 1997 car, this only has 138,000 Ks on the clock. Sadly, he passed away, and the car remained in the family, but because it, it was such a cherished thing, uh, such an emotional thing for the family, they almost put it on a bed of peacock feathers basically for for many years and uh, and that's why the mileage is so low but unfortunately there eventually was another death in the family and so the car was released from the estate and it's now for sale if you go to sentimental.shop um, you look for the classifieds you'll find it listed there 1997 mercedes-benz s500 for 229,000 rand now 229,000 Rand, I mean, it's not an insignificant amount of money, but you are getting what used to be, if I'm not mistaken, the most expensive car on the South African market. And everything works, eh? I mean, this car, as I, as I sit here in it and, and, I, and I look around, there, there is almost no sign except for the volume button on the radio which I'm sure you can find on eBay except for the volume button on the on, on the radio there is no sign that this car has ever been driven by anyone it it, it, it literally looks brand new so I've arrived at my usual let's say more dynamic uh, focused test route but anyway it's going in the direction of where I want to do the photo shoot of this car so um, I can tell you this you know there are no flappy paddles for the gearbox and um, I mean you can't put it down and lock it into third gear and and sort of keep a little bit more control but even when you floor the throttle as I am now it's not a particularly fast or lively car but I would say it's a momentum car really uh, very much like my Citroen actually not the most although there you go got a little bit of a tires tire chip there maybe you just uh, need to get get it in the right rev range but yeah it's 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 it's, it's not AMG and it's not supposed to be in and, and I think it would be unfair to judge it by that and, actually tracks quite nicely through the corners I must say for such a big tank and when you
couple of things you have to get used to. The, the throttle travel is very long, so you might be thinking, yo, I'm giving it a, a boot full, but then there's still like that much throttle travel left. So, I mean, that's 3,000 revs, 4,000. Yeah, it actually is fast enough, eh? Definitely fast enough. And given its weight, and given its big steering wheel, and you know the lack of you know being able to easily select the right gear, it's not unpleasant on these twisty roads. Actually, actually the body control is bloody good. Yeah. It's actually quite fun. I did not expect that. So as much as I enjoyed the uh, S-Class driving experience, and I must say the W140 surprised me uh, during my drive today, I think the best place to experience this uh, S-Class from the 90s from is actually from the back. Because look at this. I mean, this is, this is not even a L version or anything. It's, it's the normal car. You've got acres of lead room, lots of stretch out space, and you've even got your own vanity mirror, ashtray, the works. Um, yeah, special experience, that's for sure. So after years of waiting, uh, what do I make of the W140? Yeah, it, it, is, it is definitely an old school feeling. I, th I think the S-Class that came after this is, is, is sort of the generation when I started driving Mercedes-Benz test cars. And, and the, the generation after this, I still think would feel comparatively modern to me now. But this still feels like a car that was developed mainly in the 80s and um, I mean that's good and, and it potentially has some negatives to it as well but that's what it feels like and um, I, I have to admit I, I do like it I'm not a big fan of Mercedes-Benz pushing its sort of performance agenda the whole time I you know I'm from an era where Mercedes-Benz used to be the ultimate in luxury and um, this reminds me of that so I like that it's also, I think if, you, if you're looking at a, a, a kind of a modern classic that is just a great cruiser and a relaxing drive and luxurious drive, this is, this is definitely worth considering. Um, I mean, a well-kept car like this, for example, you're almost never going to find one. And, and to find a well-kept low mileage 7 series or Jaguar or whatever else you or Lexus from that era it's going to be very very difficult and I think because the W140 for a very long time had a very bad rep where and, and, and as per usual what happens is the car goes through such severe depreciation that it gets picked up by people who can't really afford to maintain it and you will need uh, fairly deep pockets to maintain this car eventually um, a lot of them just sort of you know um, became worthless They're not worth rescuing too complex to to fix and got scrapped and so to find one like this is is really really rare and I think if you're a Mercedes-Benz person and you remember Mercedes-Benz fondly for what it used to be then nothing differently this is a car that needs to be in your collection for me personally I just enjoy cruising in it I, I, it's been so relaxing I mean I enjoyed the blast in the Nissan this morning but this is just this is luxury Yeah, 229,000 Rand. It's not an insignificant 
amount of money and if you look at what you know Lexuses and, and 7 series go for from this era 229,000 Rand is pretty steep but I think firstly there are more Mercedes Benz collectors in South Africa than there are collectors who would look at a 7 series from this generation or a Lexus and so I think maybe the time has come for us to consider the W140 as a as a S class that you have to have in your collection to have it complete because it is kind of the last of the old school Mercs and I do like that about it thanks so much for watching guys hope you enjoyed that um, I certainly did found it very illuminating myself um, let me know what you think of the W140 Merc in the comments below very keen to hear what you think whether it's it's get got to that point where it's it's really genuinely becoming worth considering as a classic um, do you agree with me or not let me know thanks so much for watching